eagles flying to this conclusion that Micah, who of course grew up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, played at Penn State, is itching to escape the Dallas Cowboys and come home to roost for the Eagles. And you know what my reaction was to all of the above as I sat watching it trend on X? You can have him. Good riddance. You make him the highest paid defensive player in NFL history. You can have Micah and you can have his podcast that he seems to take even more seriously than he does football. You can have Micah and his spectacular basketball ability, which won him the MVP of the All-Star Weekend Celebrity Game. Way to go, Micah! At this rate that he's going, he'll never, ever win a defensive MVP in the NFL as in Defensive Player of the Year, which is why, I'm going to say it one more time, he's mostly hype, a whole lot of smoke, a whole lot of mirrors. Oh, Micah's back yesterday. And the Cowboys gave up 34 at home to the Eagles. I'm going to remind you, Micah played when the Packers scored 27 in the first half of last year's home playoff game. I'm going to remind you that Micah played when the Saints, the Saints, scored 35 in the first half of this season's home opener at Jerry World on the way to winning 44 to 19, Micah played in that game. Micah played when the Ravens had a Justin Tucker field goal from 40 yards to go up 31 to six early in the fourth quarter at home this year. Micah played. Too often I've had to file a missing Parsons report during games. So Eagles, hey, you, you've got everything else you need. Why don't you just go ahead and put a little icing on your, your Super Bowl cake by making Micah the most overpaid defensive player in NFL history. Go ahead. You got him. You want him. Take him. All of which was why, when 34-6 to 6 ended, I had my wife, Ernestine, shoot a video of me throwing my Dallas Cowboy hat and throwing my Brandon Aubrey jersey, my lucky number 17 that has brought nothing but bad luck to everybody except Brandon Aubrey, who's still the greatest kicker in the history of the world, but who cares? And as you might have seen, our daughter Hazel, excuse me, our daughter Hazel, our little Maltese, was sitting next to me on the recliner. She was okay with the hat throw, but when I yanked the jersey off over my head, Hazel said, uh-oh, he's losing it. And as you probably saw, she bailed. She jumped right off the chair, just the way so many Dallas Cowboy fans have been jumping right off the... All right, now he's just, he's just talking about that last point. But, um, Skip, we don't want Micah Parsons. I mean, I know that was a big thing at one point. Oh, uh, Micah Parsons, come to the Eagles. We could do this. We could do that. But I will say this. Skip definitely made some points. There are games, like, I'm not going to lie. Micah Parsons, when he played the Eagles, he definitely shows up. But if you watch, like, playoff games or big moment games, Micah Parsons really don't show up. I mean, yeah, he'll make a play here and there during the regular season. Micah Parsons, Micah Parsons really doesn't show up in big games or he he's just – He's an average player. I mean, against the Green Bay Packers, you know, um, Skip made a point. Like, he was there, but he was missing. And we don't really need that in Philadelphia right now. Not trying to, you know, clown on Bryce Huff, but we kind of go do that with Bryce Huff. You know, like, a guy, he'll show up here and there. Um, we really haven't seen him in a big game yet show up, but we will see. But we just don't need that. And then again, Eagles fans already flips out like we go crazy with Darius Slay having a podcast, but Micah Parsons podcast is like 20 times worse. I mean, he invite guys after he lose. He's super buddy buddy. As you see in the thumbnail, he's laughing and joking with Saquon Barkley. They both talking to each other jerseys. If I was a Cowboys fan, I'd be flipping out. And then not only that, he goes to the press conference, and the wording was just, eh. I know it's like a 50-50 thing with the Cowboys. Like, 
oh, he didn't really say anything bad about Mike McCarthy. And then there's another part like, yo, he know what he was doing. And then he goes on his podcast, go at the analysts. And it's like, bro, like, relax, relax. And I'm telling you, is Darius Slay podcast on steroids? And we just couldn't take that. Like, Eagles fans would implode. And then for us to even get him, of course, we had to possibly pay him a lot of money. And no, we just not signing division rival good players. Saquon is working out. And then... Like and and then again about Michael Parsons again the off the field stuff his brother is like you know I, I don't know what's wrong with his brother I mean his brother argue with fans all day and say stuff about Michael Parsons then um, clown Eagles it, it it just wouldn't make sense because then right his brother had to be an Eagles fan and he quote unquote hate the Eagles so I I don't know about this I think he's a little too reckless off the field and then on the field again he show up against the Eagles show up against the Giants show up against Washington you know the division but when it's time for the playoffs he doesn't show up it's like Michael Parsons if you're going to show up anytime we need you to show up right now and again Skip made a good point yeah you had two sacks this and that but the Eagles still dropped 34 in your head and sadly, I think Michael Parsons, well, not sadly, Michael Parsons is going to sh- stronghold the Cowboys, and the Cowboys going to end up paying him. Micah will be paid, Dak will be paid, and CD, that's their big three. That's their big three, and they can't get nothing going because then the Cowboys going to say, we need more weapons and more weapons. And then when the Eagles fans say something, they're like, oh, but y'all got this, got that, and the third. Oh, well, Howie Roseman is better than Jerry Jones, right? Y'all said it was a whole debate. Y'all was saying Jerry Jones is better than Howie Roseman because the way he drafts, et cetera, et cetera. We're like, hold on, wait, what? Now Howie Roseman is getting better at drafting. We got to think of last year. Jalen Carter was a runner for defensive player of the year. Now you're going into this year. Quinn Mitchell will be a runner up for defensive player of the year. Don't let Quinn start racking up some interceptions. If Quinn start racking up some interceptions, I mean, it's said and done. He will be rookie of the year. And not only that, we got Cooper DeGene. I mean, he he will possibly be in the conversation for rookie of the year. So um, say what you want, how he's drafting right. He's making the right moves at free agency, a.k.a. Saquon Barkley, a.k.a. Zach Bond, who looked like the best linebacker in the league. And Cowboys, y'all have to deal with this again. Michael Parsons is a great talent, but it's just he's a cowboy. He do cowboyish things. Don't show up in big moments. Love the big media attention. And Eagles, again, we just couldn't take that. But that's all I got for you guys today, man. And what do you think of how do you feel about Skip Bayless crashing out on Michael Parsons? And he's like, you know what, Eagles, go ahead and take him. I'm saying nah. Y'all probably saying something else like nah, Eagle out. He he's He's a great, he's a goat. We got to go get him, but I don't think so. I don't think we need him, but this is Eagle Al. I'm out.